YouTube, what's up? My name is Zero Solstice, and I like to make gaming and music videos to entertain the masses. Because it's what I eat, it's what I do. That was an extremely gay reference, but if you understand it, then so be it. Today, I am introducing my character in Fallout 3 for these guides. His name is JT, because, well, those are my initials. And he is a level 4 <laughs> at the beginning of this very long episode. Now, this is one of my longest and most instructional videos I have ever created, without a doubt. It is the longest by double the length of the next longest, easily, I do believe. Uh, obviously, I realize you will not want to sit through this entire video, so all I am going to say is, like, it's an extremely instructional video. Um, I'm probably going to put the key points of this uh, item, the Blackhawk, in the description so that you can just go to those times in this video and find those items and like know where they are so that you don't miss the extremely important stuff but if you want like an ex if you want to watch the whole video for a nice long instructional commentary and gameplay that's also amusing then be my guest I'm all for it speaking of which this is not only is this the longest video I've ever produced this was also the longest render I've ever had like, this was an upwards of 10 to 12 hours, maybe? I don't know, that's what I'm estimating, because obviously I haven't rendered it out yet. You obviously have to record voiceovers beforehand, and then render it in Vegas. So this is pretty much just a guess. I'm pretty sure it'll be about 10 to 12 hours for this whole 42 minute video to render. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm just gonna let it run overnight, let it do its magic. Um, now, I should probably should have prepared a script for this video simply because of the sheer mass of it. Like, I'm not even done the first clip yet, which is six minutes long, and I'm already, like, running. Uh, my intro, the entire intro I planned out is already pretty much done. So I can tell you right now, I should have prepared a script for this because I have no idea what I'm going to say for the whole thing, talk about for the next 40 minutes straight, but you know what, I'm just going to wing it. I'll talk about whatever comes to mind. Alright, so the big thing, as I showed you earlier in this clip, at uh, you need to get to Agatha's house, which is near the minefield, which is important and on a uh, well-known quest in the game, and... It's typically a place that you'll end up getting to anyway. So when you find the minefield, just look around near it for Agatha's house and you'll be all set. Or you can aim for it and just go, uh, just use the map that I showed as a straightaway, and as a straightaway finding for it and just find it yourself so you can get this as soon as possible. Because the cool thing about Fallout 3 is compared to Oblivion is that in Fallout 3 your weapons, damage, and strengths all depend on your skill levels instead of your uh, the level that you were when you got the item. So you can be a level 2 in this game and get the best weapon in the game. Ugh, I hate that freaking ringtone. But anyway, you can be a level 2 and get the strongest weapon in this game and it, and even at level 30, it'll still be the strongest weapon in the game as long as you skill up correctly. And uh, in Oblivion, it works as the overall damage of the weapon is increased as your level goes and your skills increase, but the uh, enchantments and all of that crap will stay back low at the variation that you obtained at a lower level. They won't scale up to the level you are now or anything like that. They'll just stay at their crappy enchanted cells. Alright, so on with that. This video is, like I said earlier, a few minutes ago. It's a video for the Blackhawk, which is a unique 
44 Magnum. It's extremely powerful, but the thing that makes it uh, a balanced weapon in this game is the fact that, yes, like I'm showing here, you can get it at level 4. It's not that hard. I mean, granted, in the middle of this, there's space cut out because I actually did another tutorial that I posted a few days ago for the Alien Blaster. Granted, I had that gun, and that's pretty much what got me to survive through the place. Still, it's the fact that I was a level 4, and I had the equipment that could get me through this. So, even at a level 4 and being able to get the gun, 44 Magnum Ammo is still the most one of the most rare ammunition types in the game. Like, one of the most rare normal ammunition types. Like, .308, that's a normal ammunition. Uh, 5mm, that's a normal ammunition. Things that aren't normal ammunitions are like Mesmatron ammo and alien power cells. Those are considered uncommon, unnormal, unnatural, whatever. And you can't really buy those. But 44 Magnum ammo, you find it, you can find it, it's not too difficult, but at higher levels. Because the thing is, you will almost never find 44 Magnum ammo at level 4 in any crate whatsoever. You will find it in stores where you can buy it, but being a level 4, you won't have much cash. So back to the thought of it being balanced, you've got to use it wisely. It's extremely powerful, but you've only got so many shots. It's like the uh, Alien Blaster where, sure, it's a god gun power rifle, but you've only got a set number of shots before you're completely out forever. Alright, I am extremely sorry for that very long pause, but my girlfriend texted me and I can't really ignore that, otherwise I might get bitched at. I doubt it, but still, I, I'm the kind of guy that doesn't take their chances with shit like that. So anyway, uh, as I was getting at, it's a great gun, ammo is at lower levels, very rare to come by. Um, a level 4, level 5 could get it if they really wanted to, which, trust me, it's definitely something you would want to get. It's one of the best guns I've had. It's one of the best guns that I still have because it's got a scope, so it's long range, it's wicked strong with my small gun skill, which is 100, and because of that small gun skill being 100, when looking down the scope, there is no sway at all. So it's a like perfectly 100% accurate rifle, and yeah. So this isn't as hard as I expect. Uh, this isn't as hard as I was expecting it to be. I mean, I've already hit the eight and almost a half minute mark, which is a normal commentary, and yet I've barely gotten beyond the basic commons. Uh, I've barely gotten beyond the basic information that I would have been at at like minute two in a. Call of Duty commentary, so I'm, I don't know, it feels like I'm distributing the time pretty well, so yeah. Either way, if you like the idea of having, oh yeah, and that's another issue. I know I just got completely sidetracked, I'll get back to it, but another issue with this place is at a low level, unless you really decided to pick up your bomb, I mean your uh, Lock picking skill, you won't be able to take any of the shortcuts like I wasn't able to. So you'll have to go the entire extremely long way to get in to the Swa Stradivarius. And also the other extremely important piece that you cannot miss, cannot forget, you need to have it. Not even kidding. Alright, anyway, as I was getting at. Ah, oh, shit, what was I getting at? Ah, oh, goddammit. Oh, oh, I love my life, I remembered. Uh, if you like the idea of me creating these extremely long but extremely informative, in-depth tutorials of these games and whatnot, of all these different power items, unique items, all that fun stuff, just give it a like. Send a com uh, Post a comment, give it a like, send a message, do whatever.
And honestly, I'm always pretty well aware of that stuff. My lurk is about to kind of dominate me. Sort of, sort of not. <laughs> okay, when I say sort of, sort of not, I mean it almost freaking killed me. I have one bit of health left. That's some scare. That's scary shit, bro. Especially when there's another one right there, and it's chasing me. So this is where I pull out the oh so lovely alien blaster. Because I don't want to fuck with this guy, honestly. I'm a little too scared of getting killed. Uh, because in Oblivion I have an OCD to sleep too much. In this game, I, I mean, in Oblivion I have an OCD to save too much. In most games I have an OCD to save too much. But in this game, for some reason, I never save. And it really butts me in the ass sometimes. Like, I'm, I got really lucky here that it didn't kill me, because I'm pretty sure the last time I saved was back at the start of the uh, chambers. But I'm, I don't really remember. Uh, now, one of the big things that you can always miss when performing this is the fact that she tells you there is one piece of equipment that she wants you to get, and that's the Swath Stradivarius violin. But the seat, but the hidden undertone of the fact is there's another item that's completely unmentioned. Well, I'm pretty sure it's completely unmentioned. I don't really remember that you also have to get, and that would be a book of sheet music. It's a music book. Now. The Swath Stradivarius, you're led to that, but you have to either be lucky enough to, uh, you have to either be lucky enough to find the music book, or you already know about it, like you already know it was there, and now you've just got to find it. So, it's pretty much unmentioned, it doesn't have a waypoint cursor like the... Actually no, I don't even think the Swath has a waypoint cursor, so never mind. Well, either way, none of them have a waypoint cursor, so you're pretty much running on empty. You're just trying to find your way through and picking up the obvious things. Like, you're obviously trying to get to the audio recording chambers, because that's obviously where the musician's going to be playing and recording. Kind of like right now, I am in the Vegas Pro 9 studio recording this commentary and layering that on top of this. Which is extremely long. It's going to take ages to render, and I'm really hoping it's worth it because just because of the length, I doubt that many people are going to want to watch this video. Uh, I'll probably make the title like Black uh, Fallout 3 Black Hawk Tutorial extremely informative. Now, the reason it's so long is simply because I could not remember where this damn pistol was. Oh, wow, shit. Not the pistol. I could not remember where this damn freaking piece of crap violin was hidden. Because I couldn't... I didn't have a high enough lock picking, so I couldn't open any of the doors that I took on my first attempt. Because on my first attempt, I think it was like level 20 before I found Agatha's house. So, I wasn't fucking around. But now, I'm like... But for this recording run through I was completely fucked because I didn't have any of my guns, any of my lockpick skill, any of my any skill which is why my melee weapon isn't doing jack shit to this guy. There's a Nuka-Cola Quantum right there that I will be getting later on. Because like I said this is an extremely informative w tutorial walkthrough because of the fact that not only do I get both pieces and show you where they uh, the important things are the way through and all that crap, uh, the way through for a low level and all that crap, but I also show you a bunch of other little hidden item tidbits because of how many times I get freaking lost. So it actually turned into a much more in-depth tutorial than I was originally expecting. Now as you can see, those two Mylerks completely busted up my health again. So, it's right around here, yeah, it's right here that I turn back and go to sleep again. Because, being such a low level, I can't really afford or find that many stim packs, and they don't heal too much apiece, so I end up going through a bunch more of them for a lesser cause. 
So I tend to sleep more in this game when I'm at lower levels, but in Oblivion I just spam the healing spells because Oblivion is amazing and Oblivion has magic. <laughs> and it has potions in case your magic blows or you don't like using magic. Either way, yeah. So it's just past the 15 minute mark now. Uh, I'm traveling down the hall. And I'm just looking through the rooms, finding a bunch of little things, extra stuff. Uh, I have not listened to these audio recordings, not even after uh, post grenades and crap like that. Yeah, not even after recording this have I checked those recordings, so if you want to, go ahead, but I have no idea what they say. So if you want to take a listen, you bored, you want to listen to a man's voice. A soothing man's voice. Then just take a listen to those audio recordings and you should be all set. Now I realize listening to my voice for 40 plus minutes straight is probably extremely strenuous. So I'm probably going to cut the talking to a minimum at later points. But because this is a tutorial walkthrough, that might not be the brightest idea. So like I said, I'll probably just put the key points of this video in the bottom section, uh, in the description of the video, and or in annotations, so that right from the start of the video people are able to see, alright, here's where all this crap is, so I can be prepared for this shit. Convict Hayes has left my party. Alright, so now, where are we at? Uh, still hunting through the rooms, alright. So, another Meyer Lurk. Yeah. These guys can be really bitchy, and no matter what level you are, when you come into this vault, these are the guys who always inhabit it. Like, every vault is special for some reason. This vault, for some odd reason, is completely infested and always will be infested with Meyer Lurks. Okay, now in this bathroom, right there behind the toilet is a sheet music book. That is one of the most important parts to this tutorial. If you do not find that when you go back to Agatha with a Swa Stradivarius, all she will do is give you the radio station uh, to her radio, which obviously doesn't really do jack shit. So, do not miss that book. So help me God. So help you God. Alright, so... Uh, some of the safes in here are extremely easy to pick, like, as you can see right here, this one's just an easy, which is, I'm kind of lucky because my lockpick skill is exactly 25. Um, but the doors that make this an extremely easy experience by shortening every path, those are all locked at 50. So yeah. Anyway, in this room you will find that uh, good old little key next to the dead dude's body, you're going to want to make sure you take that, because when you head back, it opens up a door, which brings you into a warehouse that's filled with the little tidbits of ammunition and explosives and cool crap like that. So it's a bunch of free ammo stock that you should definitely check out, no matter what level you are, because if you're at higher levels, you'll get different kinds of different maybe better ammunition. So right here it says use key, opens with a key. As you can see, a bunch of energy cells, some stim packs, a blood pack which I never use, and a few rat away, which is useful. On the bottom there's some ammunition boxes. So you just open, crank those open and they give you shit tons of energy cells. I couldn't open that box, so I don't know what's in there. I'm pretty sure it's just a crap ton of uh, high energy, a crap ton of energy cells, but I really don't know or remember, because I haven't played my real account, uh, my good guy, in a fair time, and even if I did, I got this weapon so long ago with him that I wouldn't even remember the layout of this place, which is why I'm having so much trouble making this, uh, which is why this video is so long and I had so much trouble finding the fucking place, so, yeah, get at me, bro. Anyway... God damn, I feel like I'm talking so much. Uh, then again, I am, because it has just about been 20 minutes. 
So the thing that's extremely uh, aggravating about this place, if you can't open up the shortcut doors, is the fact that you have to take every doorway to go around all of the shortcuts and crap. You have to go through all the big places, all the big rooms. And yeah, once you do that, you have to go through the reactor room, which means you have to kill a bunch of Mirelurks, you have to walk through a crap ton of radiated water, which is never too bad, honestly. It's only one rad a second, <coughs> excuse me, which isn't extremely bad, especially if you've got a crap ton of rad away, you should be all set. So, yeah, it's just the fact that you've got some extra fighting to do, you've got some extra distance to walk, and it just makes this whole ordeal that much longer. Now, as you can see here, I managed to walk myself all the way back to the start. Because I'm not extremely bright, and like I said, you can get lost in here, and without taking the shortcut doors, you have a lot of walking to do. So it's pretty easy to turn yourself around. But anyway, once you, once you turn yourself around like I did, you head through this door, down the stairs, down the other stairs, because vaults have an addiction to stairs, and now you're in the reactor room. And in here you've got some Mirelurks to kill, not an extremely large amount, but it's still kind of annoying, because you've got to kill them while walking around in this shitty, nasty-ass water. It's probably got, like, shit stains in it from all the Mirelurks that have been laying eggs in that. So this is kind of funny right here, this is a nice little spoof. You kind of get stuck on the control panel, and I found that kind of entertaining, but then when you move, he completely molests you because he's a Mylark hunter, and hunters don't fuck around. Alright, now, sadly, during this, I run out of shotgun ammo, and that's why I have to resort to rocking my alien blaster, and... Honestly, I have it and save it in my original character, so I don't really mind, like, completely blasting away with it in this character, because honestly, I have it and protect it in one character, like, it's gold, so I might as well have the audacity and enjoy myself to the point where I can fuck around with it in another character, because not every character is meant to be treated like, sa uh, sanctioned gold, diamonds, and pearls. Like, honestly, there's gotta be that line somewhere where you say, okay, I've done this already, or I ha I've had this for so long, I might as well fuck around with it like I'm its bitch. No, like it's my bitch. I totally just fucked that phrase up. Anyway, um, you don't have to access this terminal, I was just kind of curious, and it was a waste of time, so... Unless you're extremely really curious and you want to know exactly what all that shit says, go for it. But otherwise, don't waste your time. Alright, so, while I was doing this, I guess I forgot that that room was, re this is a reactor room, and that that room was actually filled with, uh, gas. But I was rocking the laser weapon, and it kind of fucking set it off. So, sure I was in vets, but I'm almost certain that it actually ended up hurting me anyway, at which point I had to use up a few more of my stim packs. So yeah. Uh, if you do watch this whole video, I'll put a nice little hint right here, because you'd probably end up skipping over this if you weren't watching the whole video. Uh, nice little wink wink nudge nudge. Uh, I'm, there's a bunch of skill books hidden in this place that I found during the uh, during rec this recording of this video. So if you actually watch this whole video, you will be able to find them and other people won't because I will refuse to put those as some of the key points in the description. So for those who actually for those who are actually cool or nice enough to sit all the way through this video, and give me the light of day for going to the trouble of making a video this long. Uh, you'll be rewarded with a few ex little, uh, a few little extra, I'll say. So if you follow all my footsteps, even the ones where I, like, turn around a lot, just failingly, then I think you'll get rewarded a fair amount, slight, slightly fair deal.
But that's just my opinion on the matter, because if you don't have comprehension, then you won't get too much out of the books to begin with. But anyway, uh, here we are in sound testing. This is the room that you need. This is where the Swast Redivarius is kept. And... Uh, yeah, this is where shit goes down, son. So, this is the point when I realize, okay, this laser pistol sucks. Trust me, when you get plasma weapons, you will realize just how shitty every single laser weapon is for life. So right here, I really don't want to die, because I, I hate the music of dying. It just makes me feel like sad face. So I just completely restart, and before anything even happens, I whip out the alien blaster, because I'm pro like that. I was originally going to use some grenades, but I was out of grenades from earlier when I was using them all, and my energy weapon skill is not high at all, so the plasma, uh, the pulse equipment absolutely blows dick for me at the moment. So, I pretty much try to avoid that. Now, this is a really cool gun, the 10mm uh, SMG. It's fun as hell to use because it sounds cool, and it's got a nice rate of fire. But, at the same time, it's pretty damn weak. So, unless you have uh, Sydney's Ultra SMG, uh, Ultra 10mm SMG, which is a un extremely unique 10mm SMG, obviously, um, then you probably want to stay away from it. But there's obviously going to be the point where you've got so much 10mm ammo that you just want to waste it somehow. So you whip out a pistol, a 10mm pistol, or uh, yeah, SMG um, is probably my choice over a pistol, over the 10mm pistol because it has a higher rate of fire, it's way stronger, and it's just a lot more fun. Go but that's just me. Anyway, uh, I slightly fail right here, so you gotta make sure that you hit up the terminal and open the recording studio before you try to get in there, otherwise you'll just find yourself knocking on a locked door, so. Thank you. Someone in this party that You just wanna be careful, survey your surroundings, don't get caught off guard by any of the, um, Myr Myr when you're hunting around for this shit, and you should be all set. Now, I realize this is an extremely long commentary, and like I said, Marlark Hunter. I don't expect you to sit through all of it. I don't expect anyone to sit through all of it, quite honestly. But, if you do, then you're probably listening to a very overdrawn out commentary that I'm really not making too easy on the ears because I don't entirely know what to talk about because of how long this commentary is. Like even right now I'm not making this an extremely easy thing to listen to because even right now I'm ta wasting time by simply talking about like playing uh, simply uh, you know you know what I'm talking about. God I just freaking lost myself Jesus. Anyway, back on topic, as you can see right here, open door, requires key. You cannot open the door until you hit up the terminal, and the terminal is pretty much right on, uh, right near this door. It's inside another room. It's one of the only working terminals to begin with, so it's not extremely difficult to find. It's, I'm sure you can do it a lot bit easier than I did here because, yeah, I really had no idea where I was going. <laughs> I got lost so many times. Anyway, it's getting to the point where I think I'm going to cut out an unneeded portion of this video. And that unneeded portion is where I get lost trying to get back out of the place. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can do that, uh, get back out yourself. It's not too difficult. I just ended up taking repeatedly wrong doors. So it was really overdrawn out and unnecessary. So yeah. Anyway, as I said, there was a terminal a few seconds back. You just hit open recording studio. It opens up. There's a safe inside. Yeah, uh, you can open it if you want, but typically there's only some bottle caps in it. You just navigate this minefield of chairs, stands, and dead people, and there's the Swa Stradivarius. So now you've got to return to Agatha. 
And that pretty much finishes the quest. But like I said, make sure that you have the oh so important uh the oh so important cheat music book and you should be all set from there. So I'm just gonna cut out this part right here so that you don't have to watch me escaping because it takes a while and I'm gonna pick it back up at Agatha's house. But on second thought, if I do that, I'm pretty sure I'll be cutting out a skill book or two, so... You know what, forget it. What's the difference between an extra ten minutes at this point if you were able to spend half an hour watching this video or anyway? Well, it's an extra ten minutes gonna hurt. So, by now, I ex I'm expecting that you decided to mute the YouTube video itself so that you don't have to hear my voice rambling. But that's just my guess. I really don't know what you're up to. You naughty dog. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just gonna finish up this commentary because honestly, it's making this commentary is just as time consuming as watching it. So th don't think you're the one who has the bad job here because I had to spend extra length just recording this crap. And apparently, according to EA Store, I can get incredible savings on RPGs until April 24th. Well, this game, it looks RPGs. Duh, right. role playing games. What did you think I was talking about, you naughty dog? You freaking Al Qaeda terrorist piece of shit. You Libyan piece of crap. Rebel dude rocking the RPGs. I probably shouldn't get into politics because my dad always rants whenever anyone or anything in the house brings up politics or Obama. So I shouldn't even get onto that subject because uh, this could go for me, honestly. <coughs> Pardon me. So yeah, I've got Black Ops running right now because my Xbox is still on because I turned it on to record some gameplays that I have ready for commentating not too long from now actually you can expect those videos soon I just have to record them, commentate them, render them and shazam I'm done and they'll be here for your enjoyment but yeah anyway I get I stay in this room for a good minute or two because I don't really realize that there's no doorway in here <laughs> Now the useful thing about it though is that there are multiple ammunition crates and there is a laser rifle hiding on the top shelf of uh, one of those shells in there. So that's definitely a plus, but otherwise I went all that way for no real apparent reason. Anyway, there's the Black Ops music. Yeah. But anyway, that's not important. <laughs> what is important is this video's commentary, this video in general. So it really did take me a while to get out of here. I don't, I'm not even too sure why. It just did. Don't ask, because I won't answer. Because <laughs> I have no idea why it took so long. I got so lost. <laughs> anyway. I, I'm not gonna lie though, it feels really kind of cool to have one of the longest walkthrough tutorial commentaries ever created on my channel. In ever created, period. It feels kind of cool having this video to be able to say, haha, I'm able to post a 40 minute video <laughs> of content that some people will probably actually want to watch. And yeah. Get at me, bro. <laughs> so I think this could turn out pretty well, but at the same time, it could really turn probably turn out really bad too. Simply because 40 minutes looks like a daunting task for people to want to watch if they're searching for a nice tutorial. They're gonna want the short, quick, easy one, as compared to the extremely detailed one. So I don't think this video will get a lot of views, even compared to my average number, it'll still probably get very few, but whatever, I'm hoping for the best, because that's what I do. I enjoy making gaming videos, and I realize they don't get many views, 
but I don't care because I enjoy making gaming videos. It's the reason I made my very first videos on this channel, music videos, because music is like my lifestyle. It's what I do best. It's what I was born doing well. It's the one thing that I was born doing well. So that's why I do that. And a lot of those videos that I go figure, created out of gaming content, got a lot of views. My COD 4 and MW2 uh, piano pieces got 5k views a piece, I do believe. So, just goes to show. In fact, uh, one of my uh, Bethesda videos, music videos for Orioles Ascension got a pretty good number of views, and it's like 30 and 0 on the ratings. So that really warms my heart to see that I put out a video that I made purely myself, and people really liked it. People really enjoyed watching it, and so far, no one's really hated on it. So that really makes my day, and that really makes me see that I can actually do some things extremely well, and that's what I like. I like knowing that there's things that I do well. Because, quite honestly, for a good half of my life, up until I was like 8 or 10, I really felt like I had no absolute purpose. Because I hadn't started playing any music until I was about 8 or so. That's when I got my very first keyboard and I started messing around with that. Then in 5th grade I got my alto sax and that's when I really started to take off with music in general. But before that, I was just that kid in the corner who didn't do much, who talked too much, so. Commentaries, I guess, really build off of my skill of over-talking, I guess you could say, because, quite honestly, if I talk so much and I talk so well, because people say I've got a way with words that most adults hardly understand themselves, or most adults can grasp it well, whereas children can't. I guess that those skills just built onto the fact that commentaries feel like a natural kind of thing to me now. My very first commentary was extremely... I'm not going to say it was extremely bad, but it was definitely along the lines of, like, I didn't really know what I was doing. I, I swore a lot in that. Like, I know I swore a decent amount in this video, but, um, dude, it's a 40 minute long video. I think anyone can swear a lot in 40 minutes. So, but either way, like, I swore a lot in that commentary, and I was really, I don't know. I, it just wasn't a natural thing at that time, because it felt so foreign, so strange to record a voiceover. But anyway, finally made, uh, made it out of the cave the vault, made it back to Agatha's house, and like I said, there it is, all I can give you is a frequency to my radio set, and at that point I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck is this? But then I, a short while later I remembered, oh yeah, wait a minute, never mind, I still have my, uh, I still have the sheet music book to give her, so, the thing is, you talk to her once, and you give her the violin, then after that you talk to her again and she'll take the music book at which point she will gladly give you the amazing black hawk 44 magnum and it really is amazing i absolutely love this pistol i think you'll like the ending too because i decided to get the bloody mess perk right here because i always buy that perk not buy I always obtain that perk at the exact level I'm able to because it is the best perk in the game. And then I realize that it says, not that, I didn't want her to play, but I chat with her. But then I realize that it gives me the option to say, yeah, guess what I have for you, I have music sheet paper. And this is all too much. Yeah, suck it, old woman. Just give me the damn gun. Anyway, after a little bit of talking, just be polite with her. <laughs> uh, until you see the ending. <laughs> just be polite with her. 
she'll give you his old pistol that he tinkered with. But uh, I'm my guess is uh, by tinkered, she actually means he took the pistol, he mounted a scope onto it, and he modified the uh, double action so that it'd be stronger, so that it would have a higher power, and that's what made it so much better than all the other 44 magnums in the game. So anyway, right up in the corner, as you can see. You get 12 44 millimeter rounds, and you get yourself a Black Hawk. So, I really hope this video helped you out. My name is Zero Solstice. Rate, comment, subscribe, do whatever you feel like doing. I'm not forcing you, I'm simply just saying it like most other people do. Um, yeah, my name is Zero Solstice, and this has been a commentary. And bitches go out with a bang. <laughs> I don't have my turtle beaches out right now. I took them off and put them on. Well, I always buy bloody man.